हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल प्रेस द सब्सक्राइब बटन लाइक दिस एंड देन यू हैव टू टैप द बेल आइकन एडिशन टू द सब्सक्राइब बटन लाइक दिस एंड देन यू विल गेट द नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम माय चैनल हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल इन दिस वीडियो आई बी स्टार्टिंग विद द मशीन डिजाइन लेक्चर सीरीज सो let's start with the video in this video i'd be covering all the fundamentals basics concepts related to machine design and all the fundamental definitions that you should all be knowing related to machine design so that in coming lectures you will not face any difficulty in understanding what is meant by which term so in this video i'll try to cover each and every term important term related to machine design so let's start with the video in the first figure on the top that you can see here so here i have represented a force pulling force p that is acting on a body so the internal resistance that is being offered by the body in response to this external force p so that is called tensile stress that is denoted by sigma t okay so here we have a pulling force so similarly what the stress that is generated that will be called tensile stress denoted by sigma t on the contrary if we have vice versa like we have a compressive force that is being that is being acting in order to push push the body so the stress that will be generated in response to this external force p that is called compressive stress that is also known as compressive stress denoted by sigma c okay then we have another concept or like a revision for you that by hooke's law so we have stress directly proportional to strain and we have a modulus that is known as young's modulus or or modulus of elasticity denoted by capital e it is the ratio of stress upon strain then we have third referring to this figure third so here i have shown shearing stress so this term you will find frequently in machine design that is called shear stress shear strain and that shearing happens so shearing is the phenomena which tells that a fracture a permanent fracture happens of a particular machine design component due to shear stress so shearing it always happens in a plane so suppose you consider this rivet joining two plates and the total a tangential force that is acting on these these two plates is denoted by p so at particular limit see the tensile or the internal force or the internal resistance internal stress that is generated in response to this it will be denoted by tau so tau is rep representing shear stress so shear stress tau it will be countering the external force but at one particular stage when the external force exceeds the internal shear stress so the shearing will happen so the component will fail so here the rivet it breaks into two parts along this plane that is joining the two plates okay and the shear stress that is denoted by tangential force upon resisting area so here we have the tangential force p and the resisting area was pi by 4 d square so resisting force so this was d right so if you visualize in 3d so this area it will be circular so area of circle so this i am showing from the bottom view so this was this entire was d if you project it in 3d so rivet it's a cylinder so if we cut across any section it's a circle and this projected resisting area the area will be pi by 4 d square so shear stress it is the ratio of tangential force upon resisting area also we have one important term that is called shear modulus or modulus of rigidity it is denoted by g capital g it is the ratio of shear stress upon shear strain okay last we will have one important term or another type of stress that is called bearing stress b e a r i n g bearing stress or crushing stress 
C R U S H I N G crushing stress. So bearing stress or crushing stress, those are similar names but used like vice versa. So the but the meaning is same. Okay. So refer to this figure. If we have a again we have a rivet joining two plates and the thickness of each plate is T and the tangential force again it is P and the rivet diameter it is D. Then from the bearing stress or crushing stress it is denoted by ratio of P upon DTN that is P is the tangential force upon resisting area it is equal to DTN because here we are considering that the total force it is acting on this plane that is along this length so the total projected area or the total projected area of the rivet that is on which the force is acting it will be all across this in 3d so you visualize the length will be or the height will be t and the depth will be d so the total area will be d into t and if we have multiple rivets then you multiply that with n that n denotes the number of rivets per pitch length so d t n so sigma b or sigma c it is represented by ratio of p upon d t n where p is the tangential force and d t into n it is the resisting area so in machine design what you have to do is you have to visualize because the diagrams those will be given in 2d just like here but you have to visualize in 3d so you remember that crushing happens along the this area that i am shading now along this area and along this area from both the both the sides okay so this area you have to extend that in 3d so this length was t right this length was t but in depth it will be d only so the total projected area when you will see from this side when you will see from this side it will look like this so you have to understand you have to visualize that how the projection or the projected area is calculated this was t and this is d and we are looking from right side in the 3d in the plane of the paper in the depth depth wise okay so this is the area similarly for journal bearing so bearing itself it's a very big concept very big topic so when we will come into bearing we'll we shall discuss in much detail but for the time being you understand that the total crushing crushing means the total weight it's being applied on the particular surface of the bearing on the outer surface area of the bearing and this projected area again this projected area if we talk in 3d so this this length is it is given by l and in depth wise it will be d okay so if you see from this side it will be tough but for this one you have to see from top so if you see from top it will be looking like this where this is the depth d this is length l and this is the overall projected area or the load bearing surface area so you have to visualize in 3d again i am saying you have to visualize in 3d in order to understand machine design better so the total area will be l into d so the bearing force that is again bearing stress or bearing force it will be ratio of p upon l into d okay so this is the initial four type of stresses let's move on to the next so here we have lateral strain upon linear strain this term you have to carefully understand because in questions generally we will be given poisson's ratio it is denoted by mu or 1 by m generally we denoted by mu 99% times mu so this is the ratio of lateral strain to linear strain okay and another term we have that is the bulk modulus that is denoted by direct strain direct stress upon volumetric strain 
it is represented by capital K bulk modular and you should also remember this relation that I am writing E is equal to 3K 1 minus 2 mu that is also equal to 2G 1 plus mu where E is the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity K is bulk modulus mu is mu is Poisson's ratio G is modulus of rigidity and mu is Poisson's ratio again so this equation it shows the representation or the relationship between Young's modulus and bulk modulus and this relation it shows the representation or the relationship between Young's modulus and modulus of rigidity okay last we have okay so now when we are designing machine part elements it is always desirable to keep the total stress in that machine part element lower than the maximum or the ultimate stress at which the failure of the material can take place so this stress at which we design it is known as working stress or design stress also known as safe stress or allowable stress so anywhere if you read in the text in the coming lectures or in the numeric also if you see this term working stress or design stress or safe stress or allowable stress so these are synonyms so it means this is the stress that we are imposing or we have designed the system for okay and for each material we have a maximum stress point that is also called as ultimate stress so we always try to keep the our design stress or working stress lesser than the maximum or ultimate stress so if we represent so this is the working stress or design stress or safe stress or allowable stress suppose I call it by sigma w so this should always be less than sigma ultimate ultimate is the maximum stress point limit for any material so for any material we have any particular limit point above which if we apply stress so it will fail so in ideal practice what we do is we design our machine part element much lesser than the actual ultimate stress point for example we have sigma w equal to 200 newton per millimeter square this is the design stress okay and the ultimate stress it is somewhere around 600 newton per millimeter square so we design it for 200 but the fail limit it is 600 so we get a cushion or we get a fail limit of 400 so this will act as a buffer so although we have designed for 200 but it can go up to 400 or 500 it will not fail okay and the ratio of this 600 to 200 that is the ratio of ultimate stress to the working stress that is our known as factor of safety so for here in this condition it will be 600 by 200 it is equal to 3 so the factor of safety will be 3 so we have taken our design point at one third of the limit ultimate limit basically it represents this one okay that means the failure have will happen only when the load that is being currently applied it exceeds th th uh, three times in other words if i say the failure will happen of that material only when the current load it gets increased by three folds okay so till that time the failure will not happen so we try to keep our factor of safety more than 2.5 always that's a general practice and at any stage it should not be lesser than 2 so the factor of safety it should not be less than 2 for any application any design part so what we do we always keep factor of safety 2 or greater than 2 in ideal conditions factor of 3 factor of safety 3 or more it is more suitable or more ideal but not lesser than 2 in any condition okay and with respect to ductile or brittle materials we can have different different definitions so for ductile material for ductile material where we have yield point stress limit clearly defined so
so the factor of safety will be equal to ratio of yield point stress to the working or design stress and for brittle materials such as cast iron we have ultimate stress point defined so we will say factor of safety equal to ultimate stress upon working or design stress okay so i hope this introductory lecture it was quite helpful in the next lecture we shall move on forward in the machine design lecture series so if you have found this video helpful please press the like button please share the video and please subscribe and press the notification bell if you are new to this channel and you can send me your video topics suggestions feedback etc h engineering explained 2016 at the red gmail.com or you can also send a hi to this whatsapp number plus 919971825851 only send whatsapp queries over whatsapp please don't call on this number okay so i shall look forward meeting you in the next video till then everyone take care and bye bye